Other types of maps include things, so we've got um, our genetic map of relatedness. Uh, we can have a cytogenic map where we just know which bands on the chromosomes those traits occur at. Then we can have a physical map, which is literally the DNA sequence. Okay, so we can, all of these are useful in different applications. Depends what you want to do, what you want to know about. Um, and so we're getting to the point in genetics where we can put all of these together. And that's why, like in fly base, when you're doing your flies, you have different location information because they're talking about relatedness, chromosome location, and physical location all at the same time. So uh, they don't match up perfectly either. Okay, So you can have, like, the, here's the physical map, and the genetic map of relatedness puts certain things closer or further apart, but they're all in the right order. Okay, And then you can look at your um, recombination rate, and this is how, they, the, how many different... Um, how often something is going to cross over between those different map units. So there are also areas on chromosomes that combine less or more frequently than others based on whether or not they are euchromatin, which is open and available expression, or heterochromatin, which is tightly packed. Uh, things like the centromere do not move, express or move around at all. So they're going to have a, a lower rate of recombination here. We can sort of guess that in this map, this area here is probably where our centromere is due to the very low rate of recombination and stuff more on the ends of the chromosome is swapping around a lot more frequently. Kind of makes sense. Right? So different chromosome regions have different rates of recombination. So how does this, what does this mean for genetic diversity? Well, um, things start as things recombine and read over time, uh, linkage blocks are more and more likely to get fractured up, okay? So the length of those linkage blocks is reduced every generation, okay? So when the recombination rate is high, uh, the little haplotypes or group linkage groups are very, very short. They get swapped around. We see a lot of genetic variation um, observed. The alternative to that being, let me turn off my marker, turn off my marker. There we go. Uh, is if we have a very low rate of recombination, then the linkage groups are very long. They just sort of hang out together. They don't get recombined very often, and there's less genetic variation over time. Okay, so we can look at how often, um, how big haplotypes are, how big linkage groups are, and bring that back and talk about okay, well then what's the rate of recombination, and then how much time has passed since. So it's another way of making a somewhat similar. Um, uh, genetic clock is by looking at recombination rates along chromosomes. So a cytological map is one that we're seeing uh, DNA die, how much it's, it's absorbed or stuck in certain parts of a chromosome to kind of visualize chromosomes. So we have these regions of very dark stained DNA. This is like a, a whole big fat chromosome all wrapped up, okay, uh, in different loops and layers. And so we have different almost like cake layers or um, a geological core sample where we've got density, different layers of density here, and where the DNA is more dense, it's soaking up more dye. Where the DNA is less dense, it's not attaching to the dye as much. Okay? So that's where we're talking about heterochromatin. Okay, our condensed, silenced, gene-poor, darker staining regions of the chromosome are made up of this heterochromatin. Whereas euchromatin, the lighter bands, are less condensed. Their gene expressing expressing their gene rich, higher GC content, and stains a little bit lighter. So we can actually tell the heterochromatin versus euchromatin bands along the cytological map. Okay. Um, just a little more on chromosome shape. You know, we've got uh, wherever the centromere is, we've got different shapes of chromosomes. A telocentric centromere with the centromere at the very tip. Uh, acrocentric centromeres where we have a short p-arm and kind of a blopped satellite, like a little gloopy antenna region on the end with a q-arm. Uh, Submetacentric centrosome where we're somewhere in the middle. We do definitely have a longer uh, q-arm than p-arm and then our metacentric where they're just about even, okay? So these can also are used in our cytological maps where the position of the uh, centromere. Okay. So positional cloning gets interesting because once you've mapped up all, all the genes are in relation to each other and you know that that gene is somewhere in between these two, you can use those known sequences uh, on either side and start sequencing the DNA in between. Okay, And then you can search that. There's various ways of um, 
uh, running a program over that and you can predict open reading frames you can see okay genes usually have this structure there this structure there and you can search that um, uh, sequence in order to find your gene of interest there so you find it maybe you know about another organism it shows up in between these two genes and that strength and strain of bacteria so you're going to search your strain and look for that in between the same spot um, or just free map application so Positional cloning is a nice tool for if you know sort of where a gene is, but you haven't quite gotten its DNA sequence out, um, you can do that. So here's an example of um, cystic fibrosis was mapped to this way, where they knew that it occurred. Um, it's, a, it's a chromosome 7, and it's this particular region in between these two genes seem to be always assorting with it. Uh, they found this conserved area, and then... Um, isolated this um, complementary DNA so they took RNA and made complementary DNA from it and then used that to probe for transcripts in, in tissues and so they found this pattern of transcription of this particular gene that um, has cystic fibrosis because a certain um, gene product is made there and then once they knew that they were in the right region they could confirm it by sequencing this is of course way back in the days when it was very very expensive to sequence anything and you had to know exactly what you were looking for before, before you did it uh, nowadays we just go ahead and sequence <clears throat> as much as we want and then analyze the data after